One of the benefits of working with Photoshop and when you want to retouch things and bring things um, together as a collage or, and so forth is the use of layer mask. Layer mask are, is simply is hiding or revealing part of a layer. That's all it is. So a lot of people want to go in and let's say for example we have this image here and they want to erase the sky. So they'll come over and take their eraser tool or they might select it and press your delete key and when you do that you're you're actually going in and manipulating part of that image so you're basically this is not what we uh, when we work with images we like to go with non-destructive ways so what we try to do is instead of actually affecting the image by using an eraser tool what if someone comes back to you and says hey I want that sky back the way it is well if you erase it you can't get it back unless you have the original so when we work with a layer mask we can tell and we can go in and we can hide that part of the sky and reveal everything else that we want to see now when you work with a layer mask you have to work with a layer so as we see here on our background uh, that's not a layer so I'm going to make that into a layer first so I can show you how to work with a layer mask I'm going to double click on this I'm going to give it a name so here's the thing if I use my eraser tool to erase I'm affecting the image itself. You can see the transparency. Anytime you erase on a layer, it goes to transparency. That's great, uh, but sometimes you need, what if you want to go back and, you're, and, you're, and the person you're working with, a client says, I want that tree back in place, then it's a little bit harder to work with. So I'm going to undo that real quick. Okay, so what we really want to do here is we want to basically hide this sky because I want to add a new sky in its place. I'm going to hide this sky area. So I'm going to select it and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to quickly select it with my quick selection tool. Now since the quick selection tool can see the difference between the contrast of the sky and what's around it, it does a great job of selecting just the sky area. Now there's some areas it does not get. So like in between these tree limbs over here on the left hand side and so forth. Um, so that's something you might have to adjust accordingly and I'll show you here how to do so. Now to create a layer mask I can use my layer menu down here or I'm sorry my layers panel and down here is the add layer mask button. Um, now what I have to do first uh, if you do the add layer mask button down here it's going to automatically reveal what's selected. Since I want this to be hidden um, I'm going to go up to my layer menu and I'm going to choose layer mask and in this case I'm going to choose hide selection. Notice you can reveal the selection, you can hide all, you can reveal all. So here I'm going to do a hide selection. Now look at the checkerboard. That's again it looks like it's been erased but it's not. Now if I look at my layers thumbnail I'm going to make it a little bit larger so you can see it. You can see now we have two parts added to this layer mask. We have the actual image and we have the mask. Right now the mask is selected. Can you see a little border around the mask? If I click on the image, now it's selected. So whenever you add a layer mask, it's going to link together the mask and put it on a separate part of the layer. Now what's going to be a beauty of this is that if you want to go back and modify your original image you can still do so but you have to make sure you click on the right thumbnail. So if I click on the image here on the left hand side the thumbnail I can go in and apply colors if I wanted to I can apply a filter. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a simple filter real quick and then I'm going to undo it. See how it's affecting just that image. Now I'm going to un edit undo the mask is going to control what's hidden and what's what is not. Here's the as we look at this, you can probably figure out white is going to reveal, black is going to hide what's on a layer. So with that in mind, I can now use my paintbrush tools to hide and reveal and edit my mask if I wanted to. So right now I have a paintbrush selected. I have white as the foreground color. Let's make this a little bit larger brush. 
Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag upwards and can you see the checkerboard disappearing? That means I'm adding the background back in. So now let's switch to black and let's go in and hide part of this castle. Now there's a feathering effect going on because of the soft edge brush I'm working with. You can always go and use a hard edge brush. So if I use a hard edge brush, notice the difference here. Some, it depends on what you're trying to hide and reveal. Uh, sometimes you need to have that soft edge brush. Sometimes you need the hard edge if you want a preciseness. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up here back to edit and I'm going to do step backwards. So that brings it in. You can use any painting tool and you can paint with black or white. And just remember, white reveals on the layer, black hides. So if I go in and use the gradient tool, the gradient tool is automatically going to be using a black to white foreground color. So if I look at my options up here, I have it black to white, which is our foreground transparency. And notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to the left and drag straight to the right. What it's doing is where it's black, it's hiding it on the left hand side. Where it's white, it's revealing. So if I move this up and down, you can see that it's now revealing what's at the top and down at the bottom it's hiding. So look where the white is on my thumbnail. And that's again revealing what's on the layer. Black is hiding it. So you can use any painting tool that works with black or white. You can go up to edit fill and use the edit fill options if you needed to. Let me go up to window here. I'm going to go back to my history panel so I can undo things that I'm working with. And what I'm doing, I'm just going to undo up to the point where I redid the uh, with the sky itself. So again, if you want to go back and change the colors or anything with the image, make sure you click on the image thumbnail. If you want to manipulate the mask, you have to click on the mask thumbnail. Now what I'm going to do is create a new blank layer. And what I'm going to do here with this new blank layer is I'm going to move it down below my layer itself. I'm going to just give it a name, Sky. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose, I'm going to have the white as the background. I'm going to choose black, uh, the black, my black foreground color. I'm just clicking on the color picker right down here. It opens up my color picker dialog box. I'm going to choose a blue here, just a light blue. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to go up to filter, stylize, I'm sorry, uh, filter render, <laughs> clouds. And what it's going to do is it's just going to mix the white and blue together to create clouds in the background. Now when we see this, can you see the difference over here on the left hand side and the right hand side? Left side, you see you have this white background showing through? Well, we don't want to see that. We want to see transparency. So because we created a mask, we can go back in and modify it. We can make some adjustments to this. That's what I love about working with Photoshop. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to click on the mask thumbnail. On the PC, I'm going to right click. Uh, if you're on the Mac, you can also control click, open up the shortcut menu on the th mask thumbnail. I'm going to choose Refine Mask. Refine Mask is great when it, you want to work around the edges and get things transparent in between. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the view here. Um, I'm going to make it uh, on black so I can see those white areas I need to work with. And then I'll turn on the smart radius to help get some of the edges. So what it's going to do is, I'll, you know, depending on the resolution of the monitor or the image itself, uh, you can increase it up a little bit. But you can see some edges around here. But what we're going to do here is we're going to take away this white. And how do we do that? Well, all you have to do is come over and paint in that area. Photoshop is going to distinguish what is the background and what is what you want to maintain. So I'm just going to paint around here where I see white. I'm going to release and you just have to go back through and as you're working with this go over a couple times to get what you want. See how that white disappears? So I'm going to come over here on the right hand side
And again, you might have to use a different size brush where needed. And you just kind of fine tune what you need to work with. You can also make some adjustments to your, your edges and that. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to find that mask. And then now, I probably went too much over here on the right hand side. You see it's a little more transparent, you know, on that. So I probably went back over it too much and it probably should have adjusted a little bit better, you know, different on that part. But on the left hand side does a great job on that. And you can see right through it, it makes it more, look a little bit more realistic on that. So working with layer mask are, is really an essential part of Photoshop. The key about layer mask, it's non-destructive. And that's what we want to do with a lot of our images. We want to be non-destructive. So when I go in and I want to uh, uh, take it part of the image, uh, like for example, I'm going to go in here, image uh, this image here. I want to take my quick selection tool. I want to select, select the dragon. Again, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do it a little bit quicker. Um, again, I want to make sure I get everything as much as possible, but um, if it's going to go out in the building right now, um, I can go back and clean it up uh, if I needed to. And again, I'm painting my selection, I'm painting my selection in. Okay, I don't have a, a, a good selection, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the uh, layer mask button here. So on my layers panel, I'm going to click on the layer mask button. Now, as you can see here, it's revealing what I have on that layer. Now, I can clean this up if I want to, and I'll zoom in. Like here, you got this post. So what I want to do is I want to hide it. Well, how do I hide it? I take my paintbrush tool. I'm going to use black as the foreground color. I'm going to use a hard edge brush here. Okay, which is set. And then here I can use a bigger size brush if I want to. And what I'm doing is I'm going to paint this away. It's like erasing, but it's not. You know why? It's because the original pixels are, all, are always going to be there. So what you do is you zoom in and you get closer and closer. You might have to use a smaller brush as you get closer to the edges, but you're going to get more of a precise selection. So as I move up here, you, as you can see here, you can see part of the building. So I can use my paintbrush. The other aspect of this, you, you could take a lasso tool and let's see here, that's kind of like a straight edge going down. So I'm going to take my polygon lasso tool and I'm going to click and I'm just clicking around creating a polygonal shape. I'm going to click in the beginning and I'll put a selection in. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply go up to edit fill and I'm going to change the contents to uh, black. I'm going to click OK then it hides that. It's like using your paintbrush. You can again remember with the mask you can paint you can paint with your paintbrush to hide and reveal. It all depends on what your foreground color is. So sometimes it might e be easier to select the area and fill it in with black or white as well. So again, over here you have to decide how you want to, to hide and reveal it, but notice I have the mask selected. Most people, if they don't pay attention, they click on a different layer and they come back in, they think they're on the layers menu, and then what they do is they'll take their paintbrush and they're going to paint. They're like, wait, why is it blue? Because that's where my foreground color is set to over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to undo it. And I'm going to click on my mask. And the mask can only use black, white, or gray. So here, when I work with this, now I'm hiding. He so says the key is to make sure you have the right color and the right brush to work with. So you can use the layer mask to help fine tune your selections. I really like using it because then, like here, I'm missing part of the tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a smaller brush. Now I want to use white for my foreground color. 
because white reveals black hides. So I can keep adding to that if I wanted to. So that's the beauty of working with a layer mask. So, you know, look at other tutorials online. There's so many different examples, but the key to remember is layer masks are non-destructive and it allows you to hide and reveal what's on a layer. The other aspect of this, remember, black hides, white reveals, and you use any painting tool to edit.